Yep, the Apple Magic Mouse 2 just isn't comfortable to use for long periods of time. And anyone who tells you different is probably into some freaky stuff behind closed doors. But if you own one of these, you're likely to also feel that it does have some redeeming features like gesture controls and the overall Apple-ness of the aesthetics and build quality. So it's a shame that it's designed with looks as a priority over ergonomics, but what if there was a product that took your Apple Magic Mouse from the back of your accessories drawer and into the limelight as a viable, comfortable everyday mouse? Enter the Solomax case. This product came from a Kickstarter campaign and amongst a few other things, it's designed to put some extra junk in the trunk of the Apple Mouse to make it more ergonomic without blocking access to the gesture controls. The Solomites case costs 27 euro at the time of filming this video and you can add extras like speed nubs or a six centimeter charging cable at an additional cost. If you have ADHD and you've already gone to the Solomites website to check this out, you'll notice that they only deliver to European Union addresses. And yes, that does mean the UK is also a no-go. Thanks, Brexit. Their shipping terms state that further countries may be added in the future. But you might be asking, Ve, how do you have the Solomites case since you're based in the UK, you remain a scumbag? Well, I had to jump through some hoops to get this. I messaged them on their Facebook page where they agreed to manually change the delivery address for me because I was going to do a YouTube review. Now, they may or may not do the same for you, but if you're interested in the product, it's worth going there to ask. Which leads me on to my disclaimer. Solomites did not pay for this review and neither did they give me the product for free. I bought this with my own money, so all views are my own. Don't forget to like, subscribe and join my OnlyFans. Solomite's case arrived within a week of my order and it comes neatly packaged in a sturdy outer box. Opening the package, I was presented with a greeting card, three boxes and paper shock absorbers. The product boxes are very thin and feel just like those candy stick boxes that we used to get as kids. I don't mind them too much since the outer box did a good job of protecting them in shipping. And they're probably good for keeping costs low and sustainability high, but don't quote me on that last bit. These are the speed nubs and this is the six centimeter charging cable. I only ordered the speed nubs as an extra, so I'm not sure why this cable also got packaged in with it. I'm guessing Solomites are trying to buy me with the extravagance or they felt I needed to have the full experience for this review. See, just tell companies you make YouTube videos and you too can save a whole six quid. I've got my original charging cable that came with my Magic Mouse 2 here. It's not the braided one like what you would get if you buy it now because we got this before the revamp. Quality wise, I prefer the Solomites one because it's matte plastic at the heads and the cable itself is thicker. The user manual is accessed via a QR code, which I don't mind because it saves on paper. And here is the main event. There's a warning sticker here to say that the two parts shouldn't be dismantled because it will break the case. It's made with ABS plastic and weighs around 40 grams. There are four holes for the speed nubs. The base is thin and there's a split where the two pieces of the base come together. The palm rest is hollow and on the inside there are markings to indicate the placement of the charging cable. The mouse slides in easily and there's a satisfying clunk when it goes in. So that's the unboxing out of the way, let's talk about how it feels. Spoiler alert, the Solomites case does in fact improve comfort. I would say my hand is small to medium in size and is three and a half inches wide and seven and a half inches long when measuring from the tip of my middle finger to my wrist. I prefer to lightly grip the case with my thumb, my ring finger and my pinky. With this grip, the elevated palm rest fits nicely into my hand and I have my index and middle finger resting on top of the mouse, ready to click or ready to raise when I need to use the gestures. The sides are not flat, they are slightly concave 
This is not something that I've seen mentioned on a Solomites website or Kickstarter page, and in my opinion, it's an underrated feature. To me, it makes as much difference to my comfort as the palm rest, because I feel like my thumb and pinky are able to rest naturally inside the slight collapse, whilst my ring finger sits comfortably on the edge. Speaking of the palm rest, it's a huge improvement over a naked magic mouse. Without the palm rest, if you relax your hand on the mouse during a brief pause, you need to make a subtle reposition to start moving the pointer again. Unless you're really weird and you like to use the magic mouse with a flat hand. With the case on, my resting position is the same as my moving position. In the long run, not needing to make those subtle changes constantly really helps to improve the overall comfort of using the mouse. It's nice to touch if you enjoy a matte finish. I do. And there aren't any annoying sharp bits and bumps anywhere that your hands have to make contact with. Although if you look closely at the nub sockets, you will see some loose plastic. The palm rest is slightly shinier than the base, but it's nowhere near as reflective as it might seem on the promotion videos and even in my own shots. The case is very light, almost flimsy feeling, but that feeling goes away when a magic mouse is sitting inside it. I am quite concerned about the split in the middle. My worry is that over time, and with lots of use, it might eventually come apart from the point where the two pieces of the base meet. I'm not brave enough to do a drop test, but I do suspect that if this drops on a hard floor from a standard desk height, it will crack from that exact spot. Again, this is all speculation on my part and only time will tell if it falls apart with hard use and if it can survive a drop. I do think that overall, the split in the plastic gives off a bit of a cheap vibe and a hint of corner cutting. It's not awful looking on the desk, but let's be honest, it doesn't match up to the elegance of the product that's sitting inside it. I've seen the word slipper used when describing the way it looks and that is pretty much spot on. It's like a mini granny slipper on your desk. It would look much better if parts were made with aluminium, wood or acrylic perhaps to match the premium status of the mouse itself. But of course, focusing too much on looks is the very reason the Magic Mouse has a problem in the first place and why the Solomites case even exists. Having an all plastic build helps to keep the overall weight and cost gain of the product to a minimum. I thought the speed nubs would be a gimmick, but they're actually quite effective in a couple of ways. I'm impressed that it does improve the top speed of the mouse. The acceleration is still low because it's a heavy mouse, but that could be a good thing if you enjoy the precision that the weight provides. It's the top speed that the nubs do have an effect on, so once you're out of the initial push, the nubs help to glide it around smoothly. The marketing blurb says that it's supposed to make the mouse quieter. In my experience on hard surfaces, this wasn't the case. It did change the timber slightly, but didn't lower the volume for me. Here is a quick sound test. The nubs pop out beyond the magic mouse gliders, so the magic mouse doesn't touch the surface at all. As such, they serve as an inexpensive way of preserving the integrity of those gliders and I doubt the Apple ones are cheap to replace. For that alone, I recommend adding the extra 5 euro on for the nubs. This is marketed as an emergency cable and I wouldn't use it for any other situation because I feel like removing and inserting the mouse too often is going to increase the risk of wear and tear. But it is nice to know that you always have a lightning cable with you in a pinch. The mouse can sit up sideways in a case with a cable connected if you prefer this orientation. But as you can't use the magic mouse whilst charging anyway, it doesn't add any additional functionality, even though the swipe gestures would be in reach. That's all on Apple for making a crappy design choice. Overall, my stance on the cable is, take it or leave it. Let's finish off with some good and bad points. Starting with the good. It does what it sets out to do. It makes the Magic Mouse more ergonomic and therefore more comfortable to use over longer periods. It gives my palm and every finger a place and a purpose. The speed nubs add stability and top speed. And for the bad, it's not amazing to look at. In fact, it hides the original elegance of the Magic Mouse 
and it doesn't look premium, especially when compared to the product it's designed for. So as you might have guessed by now, I do like the Solomites case and I feel that it deserves to exist. It improves the Magic Mouse experience where possible, even though Apple makes this quite difficult with the original weight of the mouse and clunky feeling buttons. Fatigue will still build up when using the Magic Mouse too, but the Solomites case lends a helping hand where possible. So to be clear, I'm not telling you to rush out and buy a Magic Mouse and a Solomites case for the ultimate mouse experience. That would cost you about £130 and for much less money you can get an MX Master 3 by Logitech if you're looking for the best productivity mouse. But if you already own the Magic Mouse and you actually quite enjoy the weight and force required to use it, the Solomites case only serves to make the Magic Mouse more comfortable without taking anything away from it, other than a slight downgrade in aesthetics. Thanks for joining me today for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like down below and ask any questions you might have in the comments. As always, subscribing is free, so why not hit that button too whilst you're at it. See you in the next one.